The World Bank in 2007 approved a $45 million urban transport project with a key objective of improving mobility in selected metropolitan, municipal or district assemblies through a combination of traffic engineering measures, management improvements, regulation of public transport industry and implementation of a bus rapid transit system, BRT. Now there's a pictorial view of how the terminal at Tudu is going to look like. This is just a representation. The okay. details will have um, further details as to how passengers are going to wait to board and everything. But generally, it's going to have a place which will be sheltered. There will be a ticketing office. There will be a place for passengers to wait for the vehicles. And then when the buses come over, they board and then they go. Currently, at the bus stops, you will see this common feature there. And that is how type A bus stops are. Wherever there is a labor, you see these sheds um, here for passengers to wait for vehicles to board. The type B will be something similar. But because we are going to use a bus system, going to accommodate um, the longer... As of June last year, $27.8 million has been disbursed from the IDA credit and 6 Point four one million from the Global Environment Facility Grant. So, what's there to show for all this? I'm standing on the wing of the graphic road where a few years ago traffic congestion on this stretch from Kaswa all the way through the graphic road to Accra Central was crazy. The government of Ghana in 2009 through partnership with the Urban Transfer Project and the World Bank conceived the bus rapid transit terminal system to which they wanted or the plan was to design designated bus lanes in order to ease traffic across this stretch. That led to the construction of this bridge over my right shoulder that you see here. Today on Joy News Exclusive, we are here again several years from the implementation starting date of this project to ask the typical question, how far? has this project gone? And what is the value for money that we as a country got in this project? And where do we go from here? I have with me now here uh, the project communications manager of the Urban Transport Project. Kujinchi, it's great to have you. Great to have it's you been a long, today. long time. Very long time. I remember very, that we had to time. travel all the way to Lagos and Bogota Absolutely. to study how the BRT system works there and then bring it here to Ghana. So how far with this project? Well, thank you very much, uh, Steve. Uh, we have come so far. Indeed, like you mentioned, when the project started, we thought it was important to look at the best learnings from elsewhere, those who have done it before, uh, notably uh, Brazil, Curitiba, and then Bo uh, Bogota in Colombia, who were the front runners, and they had perfected the system. We paid visits to them. We went to Lagos with uh, key stakeholders from government and then the private sector uh, operators, I meant, and friends from the media also, and we tried to learn. When we returned, it was important to tailor what we had, what we have, our local situation. Um, to whatever we had learned and not just to import wholesale yeah. because some of the things we saw there wasn't going to work necessarily in our local context. Now, that said, we initiated the implementation of the project. We had to go through a very extensive, extensive period of engagement and consultations with our key stakeholders, especially the operators. You know, a project like this, and especially being a novelty, was huge, was um, new to us. We are not used to this kind of transport system we want to introduce. So it was important that for the people who we want to own the system, we spent a lot of time, quality time, talking, informing, and negotiating with, and educating as much as possible so we can have some understanding. Thankfully, we were able to get some understanding and we initiated um, works. Originally, 
uh, from the project's objective. We were supposed to start the service operations from Kaswa through Malam, Kaneshi, the graphic road where we are now, into the central business district of Accra. And then we would have done some other pilot um, Taibi services on some corridors that we chose. We completed the first phase, or the lot one, as we called it, of the planned works, the civil works, for the service that was supposed to start from Kaswa to Accra. And what we see behind us is the, uh, the flyover, the railway bridge, and the extension of the outdoor itself. It used to be a two-lane, and it wasn't adequate for the bus operations, for the BRT. We needed to extend it to a three-lane so that we can have a dedicated bus lane for the bus. Mm -hmm. and also do the same on the railway, uh, the other bridge, and yeah. we succeeded in doing that. Right. Um, unfortunately, we've had to change focus a bit. Whilst we succeeded in constructing the phase one of the planned civil works, mm -hmm. which is the lot one bridge we see behind us, we ran into some challenges, some difficulties. We, what were these challenges? Well, Stephen, uh, like I mentioned, the project is huge, it's a novelty, it's new to our part of the world. And so we anticipated that within a five-year period, we had to implement this yeah. project to its completion. We're going to spend about a year, perhaps a year and a half, in consulting with our operators, consulting with our key stakeholders, so we could get some understanding. Unfortunately, it took longer than we anticipated. We ended up spending something in excess of three years to get our friends, the operators, GPRTU especially, and then Proto and Cooperative, to sign on and to give us their full support for implementation. And for a project like this, once you have delays in time and you have a time overrun of two years or three years, it has implication on cost. And so we had cost implications also overruns and we didn't have money readily available. Mm. But because it's a project, the funds are tied to a specific period. Indeed, the original expiration date for the project was December 2012 which is passed. Yeah. Government negotiated a two-year extension and it's expiring ex exactly a year from now, December 2014. Within this period, it is expected that we demonstrate some form of public mass transit system. Mm. Now, the project implemented... So this becomes a condition for continuous for funding, continuous funding. The, those who are funding the Absolutely, project. absolutely. So it was important that government and the project partners sit and see what could be done within the project time to, as it were, salvage the, the project mm. and to achieve something substantial. Yeah. And so we felt that with the funds we have, however limited, we could concentrate on another corridor, which was part of the pilot type B corridors, and then implement fully a bus service. We needed to pick a corridor that would require less investment in terms of infrastructure, in terms of resources so that we can turn it around and show or demonstrate some form of bus service or but mass what about, transit what service. About, what about a corridor uh, in terms of volumes of residents and the, the, the demand for use of public transport? I reckon that if you put this corridor on uh, a less patronized road network system, you will have no benefits, right? We will, certainly. But the good thing is that the studies we undertook, the BRT option studies gave us some idea of the volumes we're talking about and where we should be concentrating our efforts on. Indeed, for the what we call the Gamma, uh, which is the Greater Accra Metropolitan Area, the entire Greater Accra Area, the Transport Master Plan, it identified four major corridors, and the Kaswa Corridor was just one of them. There was the Amasama Corridor, there was the Adenta to Accra Corridor, and then there's the Beach Road starting from Tema through Teshinungwa La. -la to Accra. That's also a corridor which will be near marked for BRT services. So studies can be conducted on all these corridors and we had figures to show that there were substantial numbers that demand. And so indeed, looking at the numbers, the Kaswa was the uh, most voluminous in terms of numbers. But for the operations we are starting, it's okay to start from Amasa Mine or we could start from Adenta or we could start also from Tema and would achieve same or relatively close uh, to the casual result. I see. And that's what informed our decision to use the Amasama because government had put in some investment recently, you know, in expanding the Achimota uh, corridor, the highway has been constructed. So a lot, a lot of work has been done already. That will make it easy to plant a bus service 
uh, with little investment and still achieve some relatively impressive results with public transport movement or and movement this, of and people. And this you're hoping to conclude by the project implementation date of 1st July? Of 1st July, that's our target date. Okay. We are working That's the under the auspices of the, the, the stewardship of the mayor of Accra, Honorable Dr. Fuk and the entire uh, scooter, which is the steering committee on urban transportation in Accra, uh, coming together of all the chief executives and their coordinating um, uh, directors in Accra. They have sat through and looked at our programs and decided that 1st July is a feasible date for us to achieve. And that's what we are working towards. Indeed, we understand that uh, undertaking projects like this, uh, with what has happened uh, in our immediate history, that's led to the shifting of focus. Uh, sometimes you run into challenges that you didn't anticipate, especially for construction. We, may, we hope not to run into any pipe where we didn't think there was a pipe, though we've done our studies. We hope that there won't have any stakeholder challenges to manage. And if, barring all these difficulties, barring all these difficulties, we expect that to be done sometime by the first of July. Otherwise, uh, we know that before close of year, we'll have the bus services running. But that's our target date. Okay. This is Johnny's exclusive. And we're going to walk through uh, with the urban transport project to tell us exactly how feasible this uh, BRT system, if it comes into place, and if indeed they meet the target of 1st July, what you are expected to see on these corridors. My name is Stephen Antti. in an intersection on the Kwame Nkrumah Avenue and the, the project team are going to demonstrate to us what's going to happen when the bus, uh, the bus which is coming all the way from Achimota or Okwanko get to this point and route to uh, the city center, the central business district as part of the BRT system. So uh, Samuel Bonso has joined us. He's a transport planning officer. So, Samuel, uh, you were telling us that uh, when the bus gets here, something is going to happen. Just let us understand clearly exactly what will happen from here. All right. Um, from coming from our technical the bus will come all the way up to the traffic light over there. After Rodney, um, there is the intersection of the North Liberia Road mm -hmm. over there. So, with the coming from our when it gets there, the bus will turn into the lane that these cars are using. Are using. Am I right? Okay. Then there will be a dedicated bus lane. So that will, that will in future, become a dedicated bus lane. Yeah, it's going to be No a other lanes. It's going to be a dedicated bus lane. This no car, other vehicles, sorry. They also be allowed. Okay. They also be provided a lane for okay. this movement to continue. Okay. And then there will be a dedicated lane all the way from there for the bus. It passes through here. Okay. Now, when it gets here, you see to this side, the traffic is choked up over here. Yeah. And it will be very bad for the buses to join them. Otherwise, the whole purpose of the project will be defeated because mm. they will still encounter the delays. So we want to give the bus priority along this section. Currently, vehicles are supposed to move from the top and come down here. But we are going to create a contra flow system so that the buses will use the inner lane over here and the traffic that is coming from up there would also use this other side. Okay. And that will be a continuation of the dedicated bus lane that okay. we are talking about okay. here. And it will go all the way up to the to-do road, okay. where we have the to-do terminal the to -do for terminal. the final stop for the buses. I see. So um, if, if I understand clearly, when the buses get to this point, instead of joining this of traffic, yep. it will go into a dedicated bus lane dedicated bus and then lane. continue the journey here with less traffic or smooth yeah, traffic. According to the studies I've been done, going to make about eight to ten minutes eight time to ten savings. minutes time saving. That is going to improve the travel time for passengers right, to get right. to um, faster. Right. To so the you're going to take us to that to-do side, so yep, we that get a better question. understanding yes, of yes. the of the how the terminal, the terminal is going. Terminal. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then. So that's fine.
Yeah, so we are currently at the Tudu Terminal. Now, this is where all the services will terminate. The service that's coming from Achimota, the services that's coming from Ofanko, and the service coming from Amasamai will terminate here. When they come in here, what we have is um, eight layover beds. The buses that come on the contract flow will turn left here. The stretch here is what we are going to use for our, our to-do terminal, which means that the people will drop, be dropped off here and those who need to initiate their services going towards the northern part of Accra would also get to board their buses from here. We are going to have two beds or two layovers dedicated to the buses that will drop off passengers. We have another three um, layover beds that will be dedicated to the buses that are ready to move to go and carry passengers. So there will be more like the resting area between the drop-off and the picking. And then we, the last two beds will be dedicated to the loading of passengers. So in all, we have spaces to accommodate eight buses. But like it, uh, we mentioned, it is, uh, it is important to emphasize that the terminal here will be on street. Currently, you have a two-way lane. There's one going, one coming. We are going to convert the lane you see here into a one-way lane, dedicated one to the bus operations, and then the other lane will be reserved for mixed use going in the same direction. You will not have any lane coming. It's a one-way carriage lane, and then one will be dedicated solely for the operation of the Thai B buses, eight buses at every point in time to enhance operations of the Thai B. Right, so um, I want to understand that when the bus drivers get to this point, mm. Are they able to get out and take a rest and continue? Or they will just have to move on? Because on street, I feel that on street will have uh, a lot of restriction in terms of how much time they have to wait and extra. Can you tell us? Absolutely. Um, the time that they would have here will be for them to just be able to refresh themselves if they want to use the urinal, if they want to use a washroom facility, or maybe just grab a bite. But um, the actual rest place is what they have when they get to the main depot. But for here, there's just enough time for them to drop off people, move to the um, ready waiting area, and get on to carry passengers. So there's very little time here for them to rest. It's not a resting uh, place. The resting area is reserved at the depot. But for here, you drop off, you carry, and you are moving. That's what this uh, lane will be dedicated to. So, I mean, you, 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 you're talking so nicely about this and I'm a Ghanaian I, I understand how the situation looks like in other places like London but it sounds so unreal for us to expect that in the next year or say in the next couple of months we should have this kind of efficient system in the heart of the city is this workable it is workable indeed uh, even for those of us who are part of the implementation we've asked ourselves the same questions whether this is indeed feasible whether it is workable and we have seen elsewhere, those who started, they started it the same way we are starting. If it succeeded elsewhere, that's what gives us comfort that we can indeed do it. I think there are a few things that we have done here that gives us assurance. For instance, where it has failed, it is because there were no uh, proper legislative frameworks and there were no appropriate institutions to manage and to implement these uh, interventions. But what we have done here, and that's why it's taking us a bit of time, to build the appropriate institutions build uh, the, 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 the capacities of the individuals, of the teams, of the technical people, of the current operators to be able to run a, a service as efficient as this. And so like we have emphasized, that meant to be only dedicated to infrastructure and regulation. The private sector, which is GPRTU Pro Tour Cooperative, are being empowered. They are formed companies as we speak. They are going to acquire the necessary financing to buy the buses they need, and then they will be responsible for operations. Ours will be to monitor what they do under the rule service contract they signed with us. And so that's what we're doing. That means whatever infrastructure is needed here, like the, the, the terminal, uh, um, the sheds, the sheds that, will, that are needed, yeah. all that will be provided by government as part of the provision of infrastructure. Okay. But beyond the sheds you see, beyond the marking of the lanes, the operators will operate. And indeed, we also understand that the public, who are the ultimate beneficiaries or patrons of the service, have a role to play also. Mm. And so we'll count on the relationships we have with uh, institutions like yourselves mm. to undertake heavy and massive public education. 
like we keep saying, it is new, it's a novelty. Mm -hmm. We will not assume that uh, people would get up tomorrow and start traveling within time schedules. We've got to pump a lot of effort into education, get people to understand the culture change, the lifestyle change when it comes to how we, we relate to public transport. And we believe that with all the efforts from government, from the media, from the general public, we should be able to succeed in implementing something like this, especially if our neighbors and friends in Lagos have been able to do it. There's no reason why we shouldn't be able to do it. Right. So I am hoping, I am also of the hope, that uh, in the next few months and a year, Ghana should be able to demonstrate uh, a mass public transport system which will be championed by the bus rapid transit kind of bus system where we get the buses uh, on dedicated lanes in our cities. BRT system. The role of transport associations has been a dicey one. But has anything changed? One of the critical partnerships required for the successful implementation of a bus rapid transit system is the cooperation from transport owners and associations. In the past, transport groups like the GPRTU, the Protoa, the Ghana Cooperative Transport Associations have expressed concern about what is in the implementation of the BRT for their benefit. Many of them have feared that the implementation of a BRT system will throw them out of job. But our understanding is that a lot of discussion and a lot of talk have gone on to convince these transport unions and cooperative groups of the viability of this project and how beneficial it will be for their operation if they cooperate with the Ministry of Transport and the Urban Transport Project. So I have caught up with Edward Hoffman, who is president of the Ghana Cooperative Transport Association. And Mr. Hoffman, it's great to have you. Thank you. So You're I welcome. know that a lot of the work and discussion have been on the role that your association will play in the implementation of the BRT system, the various types. Now, walk us through the cooperation you have gone into with the urban transport project and whether you are satisfied or not. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, like you said earlier on, we were there when the AMA introduced the introduction of registering um, uh, routes, they call it permit type um, A. Mm -hmm. Initially, we did not understand it, but as we talked through, we realized that we were fighting among ourselves. You get to a bus stop which is owned by two, three people, and they will not allow any other organization to work there. So the AMA came up with this education that wherever you are working, just register your route. Let's know who and who are working on what road. That is the permit type A, and that is registering your existing route. The second issue is that from registering your existing route, we move to the second project, which is permit type B. And the permit type B involves high capacity buses. So who and who operates those things. Now, initially, we were a little bit careful about what is going to happen. Yeah. We were afraid the government is going to take over our business because yeah. it has happened in the, past in the past when they introduced bus services and before you realize you've been throwing out of business. So a lot of our members kick against it. But after education, we realize that we are not going to be kicked out of business, but rather it's going to improve upon our businesses. Okay. And how is it going to improve upon our businesses? Now, we are going to own the project. The buses that will be coming will be driven by we, the operators, and will be managed by we, the operators. So it is an improvement on our previous uh, businesses. Now, when you are going to the business city center, you realize that there's a lot of congestion. The place is choked. Now, with the high-capacity buses, which will be given dedicated lanes at a point in time, then we'll have a very quick turnover. 
and by having very quick turnover, it means it is going to improve upon our revenue. Mm. So we realize that yes, then this thing will not throw us out of business. There's going to be some sort of competition. Now we have three uh, contracts. Who takes what contracts? We went to the last workshop and amongst ourselves, amicably, we agree on who takes what contract. And as I speak, out of the three contracts, it has been shared among the three tr main transport companies. Which are which are which, which are, are GPRTU, mm -hmm. Cooperative, and ProTour. The fourth one is GRTCC, which comprises of all the other transport organization, organization. excluding uh, GPRT. So what it means is that under this uh, system, your your various cooperative groups have now formed companies. We understand. Yes, we form company. They don't. We don't want to run it the way we run our normal transport business. A driver pass by, wole wole, then he stops. This time we are going to move with time. Mm. The buses will be on shuttle. Whether it is full or not, the bus will have to, to, to move. So this is a special business entity. It has to be run professionally and not the way we are running. So are you happy with the arrangement? The reason I'm asking this is that in, a, in, a, in some uh, years past, there have been agitations between yourselves, the various cooperative unions, and the implementation agencies, the urban transport project, about the way forward. So when you look at the picture that has been painted to you now, are you satisfied that the arrangement is beneficial in the long term and in the short term for your operations? Yeah, for now, we are satisfied. Initially, we didn't understand it. Now, if I try this route, and maybe my vehicle go about 10 trips a day, with the introduction of the buses, definitely is going to reduce the number of trips I make a day, and therefore it will affect my businesses. But with the new arrangement and the understanding we are having now, for instance, my uh, organization is taking the Amasama route, mm -hmm. and the main station there is a cooperative station. We have so many smaller villages and Amasama, the mine here, or Fanko, and the, and the rest. So now they will go there, instead of all the vehicles stationed, the yes, they will go there, bring the passengers to the main station, yeah. and feed the bus. So you will not lose anything. It's like elimination by substitution. What you will lose here, you will gain here. And since we are going to own the buses, whatever profit we make at the end of the year, we are going to be for the cooperatives the as cooperative well. Group. Yes. So it means that your cooperative association is going to now go into discussions with banks or what? How are you going to fund the purchase of these buses? Yeah, the, go the, the ministry has promised to assist us to purchase the bus. You and I are aware that mm. with the high capacity buses, they are very expensive, expensive buses. And with our financial position now, it will be very difficult to assess loan without the support of the government. So this is what the government is going to do to support us, assess their loan, then we can purchase right, them. Right, you are targeting about how many buses to start with? Um, 44, 24, that gives you 68 plus 17, 68, 17, that is about 85. 85. Yeah, so we are targeting about 85 buses to 85 start. 85 buses. Yeah, but as and when the business improves, we are investing uh, increasing the freight and the frequency of our uh, Operations. Operation, and you're happy yeah. about it? Very, very happy. I'm looking forward for the day that when the very first bus will take oh. off. We are looking at three, four boxes. We've not yet selected the type of bus, but we want the bus to be very, very uh, lustrous. Comfortable enough. Comfortable. So that, so that, that you park can my decide car and to park your yeah. car and join the vehicle. It should be disability friendly. The bus should have uh, uh, an entry where you can even go in with your wheelchair. Yes, we are going to make provision about two seats for the uh, handicap, so that when you get in, you can get a place to park your, your wheelchair and then sit comfortable mm. and drive to the place. Mm. So mm. it's going to be a car, a bus, which will be luxury. And, uh, and I, I need to find out from you with this heat that we endure in the city, are we expecting air-conditioned buses? Yeah, it's going to be air-conditioned. 
It's going to be air conditioned. Fully air conditioned. Fully nye -nye. <laughs> And the rates are going to be very reasonable. Not too, very, very reasonable. Not too high because very, I, very if I get a taxi and I want the air conditioning. In fact, I the web is reasonable. reasonable. Very, very reasonable. And you, you can you, afford You it. shouldn't be afraid to sit in an air conditioned bus. Wait on that day. And the target date is on the first Gen uh, July. July. 2014. We are expecting the first bus to take off from Amasama to Accra. And we are inviting you to ride free. That one is going to be free. Free of all Yeah, times. ride free from Amasama to, to all right. Accra. <laughs> Thank you. So, so tell your people, tell everybody, <laughs> spread the good news yes. that we are changing the system. The old buses will face out gradually. Gradually. Yeah, they will face out gradually. The system will let them face out. We are not forcing anybody out of the system. Mm. Uh, and I want to sound this, that yeah. all the various trotters that are operating now will still be operating alongside, alongside the new buses. But you will decide whether you still want to compete with the new buses or you want to change your, your route. And I believe many will want to change their routes and people will prefer to join the new buses and ride to Accra. But so tell me, I mean, maybe you can, you can tell me what you are anticipating. When this operation starts, how do you expect uh, transport movement in the capital to be? In fact, there's going to be some decency. Now, go to the city right now. The place is choked. There are people who own their private car. Me, I use my taxi. There are times when I don't send my car to uh, the city business center. I will either walk or join Trotro. So if you have a bus which you can comfortably sit in, I believe a lot of people who want to park their vehicles and ride in, in the bus. So I'm looking forward for the day when you and I will decide drive our vehicle halfway, park and join the bus after work, we'll get back and then take our vehicle back okay. home. All right, so I'm also looking forward to that day when I'll leave my home and drive my car to the bus terminal and jump onto a public transport and go to work at Kokomlimle. And then when I'm done from my workplace, I'll go back to the transport terminal, jump onto a bus and return to my car and drive home. With that kind of operation in the city, we would expect that transport movement and human and vehicular mobility across our capital will be smooth. And then we're expecting that that will lead to increase in productivity as well for the general citizens of our country. The Achimota bus terminal, according to the urban transport project, has been designed as a transit terminal on the BRT route from Amasama to Accra Central. Motor terminal and what yes. I mean, so I see I've, I've been here a couple of times and I've seen this vast area reserved and I keep wondering what what that is for really yes um, as we have indicated earlier as part of the bus operations we need a big place where you can have your buses resting mm -hmm. and then you need a place where you can dispatch your buses from where you dispatch your buses is what we refer to as a terminal. Terminal. But the okay. depot is where you need to have your buses rest after okay. a hard, the day when they have run, okay. where they will be attended to if there are some servicing to be done, if they need to change tires, if it has to be cleaned, if it has to be okay. fueled, you need that done at the depot. Um, under the project arrangement for the Taibi operations, we are expecting that we will do that at Asamasaman. We have acquired land there to construct the depot fully. Mm. But in the interim, we are lucky to have this facility, which is the Achimota Terminal. As we can see, the space is huge. Yeah. There's a percentage of the space occupied by Taipei operations, the total operations currently, okay. as you see to uh, my left. But otherwise, there's this huge space here remaining. There's nothing going on. 
in future the city plans to move some operations from the circle place here but for now we have spoken to the city authority and uh, the chairman of Scooter, who is uh, the mayor of Accra, mm. under whose care this is. Has Scooter is what? Scooter is the steering committee on urban transportation okay. in Accra, okay. which is the coming together of all the assemblies in okay. Greater Accra okay. to form a steering committee um, to manage the transport operations. Okay. And he's given this place to us. So we are in talks with whichever operator, whichever uh, transport company gets to supply the buses to the operators. As part of the discussions with them, the negotiations, they will have okay. to give us, build a terminal, uh, sorry, a, a workshop, so that they can service the buses there if they come from um, their, their regular um, operation and they need to change tires, they need to refuel, they need to be cleaned, there's any maintenance that should be undertaken, all that to be done in a depot like this. And so this is the depot we are starting operations from okay. um, this year. And then we'll work towards constructing the bigger depot sometime uh, before the year ends. Okay. So that one, that, that bigger depot is the one which is going to be in Amasama? Yes, in Amasama. Amasama. That's, a, that's a permanent um, structure. Okay. Um, subsequently to later on, they are going to move to other corridors with the okay. bus system. So we're going to identify a very large space so that as we are starting with 85, but when the numbers increase, there will be enough space to cater for the buses. Yes, so so this can all take as many as what? 85 buses here? Yeah. Yeah. More, actually. More than 85. For now, for starting... We're starting uh, with 85. 80, we are starting with 85, so we identify the space for 85, the maintenance facilities, the fueling, the washing. Mm. We're going to fence the place up so that there will be security for this place. And it's right. the depot like this, you have um, the place where the drivers can rest. Yes. You have the, uh, uh, an eatery where they can Just sit eat. and have a bite, a restaurant. And they can have the vast land. Um, it will be part of what we have now, because this location will be temporary in terms of our depot operations. What we will be f uh, fixing here will be something um, removable, Pre -fab. prefabricated, okay. it will be first put together and then it can be dismantled. Okay. So we may not necessarily use the space at the top, we could be using anywhere. Yeah, we have done some designs, graphics, which will okay. show okay. Um, in the documentary, but, but that's you, the plan. Do you, do you All right, so basically, um, these are just to show a summary of what we've done today going on the corridor. Mm. And um, the first is the contract flow that we talked of on the Kwame Nkrumah Avenue, mm. starting from the intersection mm. with the North Liberia Road, where the buses will make a turn onto this side of the road, and then it will continue straight on as a contra flow, yeah. where the mixed traffic will still make use of the other direction coming down here. They are going to avoid all the bottleneck, the congestion along this side, okay. and make a lot of time savings. Okay. Continues from here then, here, is the intersection that leads that where they turn onto the to-do road. Onto the to-do road. Now this intersection, there's going to be a signal that will be created so that um, we can control the traffic that will be because mm. there will be traffic coming down here, the buses will be moving here, there will be mixed traffic also moving here. And then it moves onto the to-do road, which is going to be a one-way system. Okay. That's going to be created. Okay. So this shows in bigger times, the, the intersection and then a to-do road, what is going to happen? The buses come over and then they stop to let the passengers get off. They move over here to wait for their train to load. Then they move over here when it's time to load. The passengers get on board. When they are full, they continue and then they off. use off onto the Kojo Thompson Road and then they head back to Kwame Nkrumah Circle and to the road. So, um, between Kwame Nkrumah Circle and Tudu, yeah. we are going to have two main roads. In the inbound direction, the buses are going to use the Kwame Nkrumah Avenue as the other buses, the other vehicles use. And then in the outbound direction, they are going onto the Kojo Thompson Road and then join Circle using the Akasanoma Road mm. towards the Circle. Okay. Now there is a pictorial view of how the terminal at Tudu is going to look like. This is just a representation. The okay. details will have um, further details as to how passengers are going to wait to board and everything. But generally, it's going to have a place which will be sheltered. There will be a ticketing office. There will be a place for 
passengers to wait for the vehicles and then when the buses come over they board and then they get now this is Achimota where we currently are and this side of the terminal is currently not being used down here we have the type a operations mm -hmm. and type a i mean the existing structural operations but what we are bringing on board we are naming it as the type b system which is the bus system mm -hmm. and it's going we're going to take this place for the depot and then our terminal will also be created over here and some of the facilities that will be at the depot side we have the fuel side the vehicle washing, driver's rest, admin and management office, okay. and the maintenance section, all will be provided will over be here. here. Yeah, okay. they will be provided here to cater for all the buses that are going mm -hmm. to be used for the system. Currently, at the bus stops, you will see this common feature there, and that is how type A bus stops are. Wherever there is a labor, you see these sheds and um, here for passengers to make use of to wait for vehicles to board the type B will be something similar but because we are going to use a bus system going to accommodate um, the longer length of the buses and a lot of passengers coming on board it's going to be longer than the type A system and provision will also be made for places where tickets could be sold and um, passengers can also wait for buses to get on board. So basically, this is There's a, a short summary have, of yeah. the plan that we have ahead okay. to get the buses running. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sam. Well, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly under whose administration the pilot project falls has a lot to say about this project when we confirm our interview with the mayor. This is Joy News Exclusive.